Hi, this will be a short introduction to the measurement of sound intensity and its application to acoustic measurements. First, I'll introduce you to the acoustic intensity probe. An intensity probe comprises of two microphones facing each other, separated by a known distance by a spacer. Let's first recap the equations for linear lossless acoustic motion. We start with the compressible Navier-Stokes momentum equations, which I'm showing here in vector form. Since we're considering lossless acoustic motion, we can drop the divitoric stress tensor to get the Euler's equation. Now we can consider that the three variables that we're looking at, density, velocity, and pressure, they have a mean component with an overbar and a fluctuation component with a prime. We will also consider that the velocity has a zero mean. Now let's expand this expression, and then we can see here some red terms that are second or third order terms. And basically we're assuming that the fluctuation prime quantities are small with respect to the mean, which means that the red terms can be ignored. Then the term shown in blue here is really the gradient of the mean pressure. And since we're defining the mean pressure as the mean over all space and time, this gradient is also zero. So this leaves us with the linearized Euler's equation. An interesting part about this equation is that we can find the velocity by integrating the pressure gradient over time. This is interesting because it means that we can measure sound velocity by measuring the gradient of the pressure fluctuation. Say if we want the component of the velocity along the direction r. We just can dot this expression with r on both sides and then we get this. So that's really what the intensity probe is doing. By having two tightly matched microphones, we can measure the pressure at two distinct locations which enables us to get an approximation for delta P, and since we know the spacing between the mics, we know delta R. So let's say in practice we have a speaker as a sound source. I'll play a 1 kHz tone through it for the sake of this demonstration. Once we turn on the speaker, if we point intensity probe towards the sound source, we get a pair of 1 kHz sine waves that have a time delay between them. This time delay is simply because the sound wave arrives earlier at the first microphone and then it takes some time to arrive at the second microphone. So now as I rotate the probe, the delay between the two microphones becomes shorter and shorter, and then eventually it becomes very close to zero. We can see that the delay is zero when the two microphones are perpendicular to the wave propagation direction. From our previous equation, we can clearly see that if the two microphones are seeing the same pressure, the velocity would integrate to zero. Okay, so now we understand that we can get velocity measurements from the intensity probe, it becomes easier to define the sound intensity. So sound intensity in a very qualitative manner is just the amount of sound power going through a unit area. Say we have a sound source that radiates sound power in all directions. If we take a sphere enclosed in the sound source, we can determine the amount of sound power radiated by integrating the sound intensity around the sphere. In mathematical terms, we just integrate this area integral where i is the mean acoustic intensity. So the acoustic intensity is really defined as a vector quantity, that is the product of the pressure fluctuation and the velocity fluctuation. And it is really a function of space and time, but one can define the average acoustic intensity by simply int integrating and averaging over a long enough time window. So now let's go back to the instantaneous acoustic intensity for a moment. Let's perform a dot product between the intensity and the direction vector r. Uh, we already calculated v dot r before, uh, which is just this fancy integral. So now the math becomes a little bit unwieldy, so I can actually refer you to a paper by J.Y. Chung uh, for more details on how to, to solve this for, for an actual intensity probe. Uh, there's a cross-spectral method, which is, which is a little complicated, but uh, the, it suffices to say that the intensity probe is performing this dot product for us in real time by just having the two microphones at the known separation. So as a real-world application, let's measure the sound power of this blender here. We are basically going to perform the sound power integral on the fly around the surface A that encloses the sound source. So now you can note as I go around the model, I ensure that the probe microphones are forming a vector that is perpendicular to the faces of the box. And this is really important because we we're performing the, the dot product with, the, with DA, which is a vector normal to the surface, uh, to the area surface. The cool part about the sound intensity measurements is that the vector formulation cancels out external sound sources. Uh, so if we have another sound source near the blender but outside of the box, we can redo these intensity measurements and we can find the same acoustic intensity even though the sound source was actually louder than the blender. 
So this can be extremely useful to determine the sound power of a machine in the field, where maybe we can really turn off the other machines and maybe the emit is not any quick. All right, that wraps it up for this video. I hope you found this useful and please let me know if you have any questions. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you later.